why the fuck am I wearing a skinny tie? I had just gotten back from a faux date with a girlfriend. That's girl space friend, as in friend who is a girl. Of course, I had a crush on her and predictably admitted my feelings and naturally got rejected. She knew me. I need things spelled out. So she, very calmly and matter-of-factly, like she was turning me down for a bank loan, said, <laughs> I like you a lot. You're funny and smart. But you do nothing for me down here. <laughs> I stared at my skinny tie and pinstripe shirt and retro Converse sneakers and thought, why a skinny tie? Why so much effort for this fake date if I knew I would end up on the friendship tip? Because the truth was, I knew I was going to get rejected. Hell, I expected it. Rejection was comfortable, par for the course. One thing was clear. Being me wasn't working. I took off the tie, checked my email, and saw this message. Hi, Rory. This is Willa from Suicide Girls. We received your writing samples, and we're hoping you'd like to join our official blog as a freelancer. <laughs> Weeks earlier, I'd ended up on a vague corner of Tumblr and saw a post that said, The Suicide Girls, the Internet's one-stop shop for all manner of naked, tattooed ladies, needed writers for their blog. Even if I wouldn't get paid, I would have free access to the site, which is basically getting paid in boobs. <laughs> I emailed Willa immediately, but with one caveat. I was about to earn my teaching credential and had to be very careful with my online presence. I asked her if, all, if she could address all future suicide girls' business to a pseudonym. My alternate personality was born. Ed Farragut had a name, and an email address. <laughs> Willa emailed Ed with some guidelines like word count and deadlines. Don't be afraid of pushing the boundaries, she wrote. Give us something that people will talk about. In writing, only danger is interesting. So give us something dangerous. Only danger is interesting. Amazing dating advice. I came out strong with my first blog post, 1,200 words on the secret genius of Jersey Shore, how it was art on a Warholian level, how it spoke to a generational shift in television, and how if you didn't get it, then you probably only have a bachelor's. <laughs> it got 13 comments, and Willa emailed me saying, yes, more. Ed Farragut was aggressive with commenters. He would mix it up, analyze, and take apart their arguments like those guys on CSI study splooge stains. Ed did not give the first fuck about anything. Turns out, leading a double life is all about time management. From 7 to 3.30, I was Rory, a nice guy who wore sweater vests, listened to NPR, and used words like pedagogy and differentiation. From 3.30 to 10, which was our bedtime because even alter egos have shit to do, I was Ed. Keeping the two separate wasn't difficult until Ed and Rory met Christine. She was studying to be a math teacher, was relatively attractive, which is to say she wore tank tops, and had a cynical sense of humor. One night after class, our professor invited everyone out for a drink. Christine and I were the only ones that went. When she drove me back, we sat in her car in an empty Northridge parking lot, and I asked for her number. For studying and stuff, right? She asked. I could have said, yeah, and kept on being the nice guy, but only danger is interesting. <laughs> nah, I said, or maybe Ed said, I want to take you out on a date. Probably make out with you. I'm a really good kisser. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> the, 
most of my brain was screaming, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Who is that guy? Dude, that was awesome. I wasn't used to being so aggressive, but she smiled. I have a boyfriend. This is where Rory would have said, oh, geez, I'm sorry. Well, I hope you have a good night, and I'll see you in class. But Ed looked her dead in the eyes, shrugged, and said, I don't care. <laughs> By the time I got home, Christine had friended me on Facebook and texted me twice. I felt good. I felt powerful. I felt like Ed. <laughs> being dangerous meant being selfish. Ed allowed the texts to grow more and more suggestive, knowing Christine would not tell her boyfriend. Ed locked his lips with hers not a half hour after promising to try to be friends. Ed pretended to be a shoulder to cry on after she dumped her boyfriend and got some solid under-the-shirt action. Ed never got laid, but that didn't stop him from trying. Was it dangerous, mean, manipulative? Yep. But Ed didn't care. Anyways, if things went wrong, it was Rory who would take the hit. Meanwhile, Suicide Girls users were starting to get Ed's shtick. The latest post about being a poser only got six comments. A few weeks after that, a post about YouTube vloggers only got two, and Willa openly admitted to posting it because they were lacking content that week. Ed was slipping. I was in the elevator to Christine's apartment, wondering what snarky thing I could write to get my numbers back up, when the door slid open. A skinny guy in a Panera Bread uniform got on as I got off. Christine took longer than normal to answer the door. I sat on her couch, thinking she would join me. She did not. I got up to hug her. She pushed me away. A knock at the door. Panera Bread guy stood on the other side, still adjusting his apron. He had forgotten his visor. We get written up for that. <laughs> Christine went to her bedroom. Through the door frame, I could see the bed was a mess. The pillows had two distinct impressions on them and her panties were on the floor. She handed him the visor, turned, and stared at me. Aren't we going to be late for class? Was all she needed to say. That was the moment Ed Farragut died. I wrote another post for Suicide Girls. It got one comment from my mom. <laughs> Even with Ed gone, Christine was still friends with Rory. Rory was the one who took her out to dinner while she worried about running into people she slept with. Rory had to hear about how all the guys she was dating were total losers. Rory was the one who sat on her bed like a lapdog as she meticulously updated her OK Cupid profile pictures. I wished I could resuscitate Ed and he would somehow help me regain something resembling self-respect, but he was gone. Meanwhile, I blew two deadlines with Suicide Girls, and Willow was not happy. I ignored her emails and felt guilty. I used the site for furious, self-hating, downright Catholic masturbation. <laughs> Mostly, I had vivid fantasies in which some suicide girl would message me because she dug my posts. We'd meet up, hit it off, and then, of course, run into Christine, and I'd pull one of those, oh, this is my girlfriend, She's a model. Oh, this is, um, I'm sorry, what was your name again? <laughs> After a while, though, I tried logging into the site, and this message popped up. We're sorry, but this account has been suspended. If you would like to update your billing info, please click here. No blog posts, no free tattooed boobies. Christine texted me. Getting ready to watch a movie. Want to come over? Once again, Rory thought this was the night and said, yes. <laughs> Great. Can you pick up the movie and some popcorn and a thing of Sprite? And I did, because of course I did. <laughs> when I got to her place, she was packing a suitcase. What's going on? I asked. She didn't turn around. 
well, there's this guy in Montana. We've been Facebooking. He's a writer like you. I think it's a guy in Montana. Are you fucking kidding me? You don't look at me. I buy you fucking groceries. And now Montana? I dropped the food on her table and went to the door. She stopped me with a hand on my shoulder. I'd done it. Ed was back. She would apologize and what? I'd forgive her? Do we date now? That's a great how we met story. Well, kids, your mother made me feel like a shit bean for a couple of months. And I'm still pretty subservient and live in constant fear she'll dump me for a dude who can make a decent tomato basil soup. (laughs) I didn't even know what I wanted from her. I just knew I wanted my balls again. Look, she said, I do like you. But right now, you're my backup plan. A weird thing happened. Maybe out of pure psychological survival, Ed returned. Maybe Ed should have said some great last line, something hurtful, or even a solid, fuck you. But the only real response was, so, yeah, I'm done. When I got home, I emailed Willa an official apology, thanked her for the opportunity, cited personal reasons for parting ways. The second semester was approaching, which meant soon Christine and I wouldn't have a class together. I may not be someone else, but that didn't mean I had to put up with this shit. I deleted all digital traces of Christine. It took her a month to realize I was out of the game. When she did, I got a message that said, you unfriended me? Nice. I deleted that one too. Not Ed, me. Thank you. Rory and Perry get Kelly.